Judge Hart um, present testimony. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. It's good that Mr. Tembecki is staying here. Uh, my name is Dwayne Hart. I'm a sitting Supreme Court Justice in Queens, New York. Well, I gave the members of the committee a long package. I'm just going to give you a few anecdotes of the type of attorney we're dealing with with Mr. Uh, Tembeckian. Four or five years ago, I was undergoing treatment for cancer. In fact, I was in Sloan Kettering uh, being operated for cancer. Instead of giving me an adjournment for it, Bob Tembeckian wanted to see my chart to make sure that I was being treated for cancer and not just ducking his committee. Um, I've been charged probably more than most. I've been censured twice by the Commission on Judicial Conduct. Of the, four, of the three attorneys who uh, offered testimony against me or filed complaints against me, all three, well, the first one was a Max Goldweber who was found to be a liar and a thief by a federal judge. The second one was a Ms. Naidu, who a, one of my colleagues, Justice Cullen, found, was found, she lied to him and to the appellate division. And the third one uh, was being sued at the time for running what appears to be a Ponzi scheme to finance his cases. Um, and one of the reasons why he wouldn't try the case before me was that had the case been disposed of, he would, have had, he would have been responsible for paying the people who financed his case anywhere from one to three million dollars. Those complaints are in the package before you. I'm not making them up. They're recorded cases. Um, of the first case against me, which was, I think, litigated in 2004, I am still waiting for the first bit of discovery. Of the second one, he got, Mr. Tembecki got a little cuter. What he did, or what he and Mr. Friedberg did, they got my witnesses, some of them, because if, as you found out, I believe, if they offered testimony that helped me, the tape recorder was turned off, which is a habit they also like to do, turn off the tape recorder when there's positive evidence against the judge that doesn't help their case. And, um, I, I, I know when you say tape recording, uh, are these proceedings that they're not a stenographer or is this a case? Well, in the second trial against me, there was a stenographer. In the discovery and the trial before that, there were tape recorders that Mr. Friedberg or one of his employees controlled. In fact, during the first trial, during the first proceeding, which was an EBT, my brother, who was representing me, put a statement on the record. The statement and the things he said are nowhere in the transcript. My brother refused to sign the transcript. At the first trial, where it was a tape recorder, tape recorded, and the tape recording was being controlled by an uh, employee of the commission, I saw Mr. Friedberg making hand gestures, and I heard click, 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 again. And I believe there are other witnesses who uh, the committee might have gotten in touch with who will verify that that's their, their conduct. I also went down during the first proceeding, since you, the Senate and the uh, Assembly give them money to investigate these cases, I went down with my clerk, my law secretary, and my court officer who verified my story that the uh, attorney who was testifying against me wasn't telling the truth. Um, they were not allowed or they weren't asked any questions. So their investigation only stops at, gee, what's harmful to the judge? Um, and if you want, I will produce those people if you have hearings in New York City. Also, one of my other court officers uh, was asked by an, uh, an attorney for the Commission on Judicial Conduct uh, to change his story because, after all, judges are scum. And why would you testify to help a judge? Um, Again, don't take my word. I could produce witnesses. Um, let me see. Uh, what's interesting about some of the commission rulings, well, the first one, on a full record, 
even though the commission found that I was wrong, I was actually affirmed by the second department, both on the substantive law and the contempt that I held the uh, person who accosted me in a parking lot was, I mean did, uh, I was censured on the doctored record submitted to the Court of Appeals by Mr. Tembekian. Um, I, I think the best way to describe the way Mr. Tembekian and Mr. Friedberg, who's now at the first department, ran their, their little shop was, they marked the deck, they shaved the cards, then they started to cheat. Um, it's, you know, you know, you know I, I mean, the, the, these, are, these are allegations, and we're just, we're just trying to get an understanding. What do you mean by marking the dead? They, they, you try cases before them, they pick the judge, and I have nothing against the retired judges who they pick. They pick the judge. I've been a lawyer pushing 30 years. You mean the commission picks the judge? The commission picks the judge. You go in against them, they don't give you discovery, or they give you doctored discovery. You, you, credibility, the first dealing I had with the commission, my brother, Leon Paul, was screaming with Vicky Ma, who was one of their attorneys, and he was questioning the credibility of this um, Max Goldweber. And Ms. Ma was screaming back to him that credibility is not an issue. And, I mean, that's the type of people they have. You don't have to take my word for it. I gave you recorded documents or, 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 or case law that shows Max Goldweber, the first person who accused me, was called a liar and a thief for running a scam to bilk his clients by Judge Wexler. I gave you uh, a document that showed that in a case that was originally started in Eastern District of Pennsylvania, um, Michael Flamenhaft, who was the second person to accuse me, uh, was being sued for running what appears to be a Ponzi scheme to finance the case before me, and when he refused to try the case, oh, he also tried to extort me by saying he would complain to the commission if I made him try the case. Uh, and I produced a document wherein the attorneys who employed the third attorney who complained about me, Ms. Naidu, they fired her for lying and stealing in that case. These are the people who offered complaints against me and that were found to be legitimate by Robert Tembekian. Senator Perkins. Uh, yes, thank Senator. you so much. I have to, I have to run, but I just want to ask one quick question. So what's the solution? Well, firstly, you have to fire Tembeki and Friedberg. I mean, I, I, I got to tell you, I've been a trial attorney or a judge, again, pushing 30 years. The only person, the only reason that Robert Tembeki, in, in my opinion, so I don't get sued, isn't the sleaziest attorney I've ever met is because I've met Alan Friedberg. Okay. All right. So now you've taken care of the personalities. What about no, the no, no. It's not just the personalities. No, 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 I want to get a systemic... It's, 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 well. they, I, I heard the individuals. They don't do it right. But let me ask a question. I hear you talking about the individuals. Are there any process. systemic process issues or concerns that you might want to add to that? Well, firstly, you've got to have some situation where they don't pick the judges, where judges aren't beholden to them to be named again. There has to be a, a limit on how long... Uh, people like Mr. Tembekian can serve in office so that he doesn't have some sort of... Uh, of term limits. Uh, yeah, term limits. Uh, you, you have to have some... And, I mean, I complain to everybody. No one has jurisdiction over these people. When I was in ADA in Queens, I actually worked for Joe Fish. Uh, Judge Fish said he didn't have jurisdiction. I complained to uh, the, ter the clerk of the Court of Appeals. They said... They didn't have jurisdiction. Only when I complained to Senator Sampson, Senator Smith, and Governor Patterson did anything actually get done. I complained to the Attorney General. I complained, I had a long conversation with one of the senior Attorney Generals. Nothing was investigated. Let me ask you this thing. To, how, term limits, how, how long a term? Three years, four years. The, the, uh, and, 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 and when you make complaints to other uh, governments or other officials, 
uh, you, you said that you, nothing happened. Nothing happened. In fact, what, what would be a better process? There's got to be some. Well, firstly, you should appoint a, a special prosecutor yes. to 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 do some sort of um, of uh, accounting of what they what they've done. These people had no. You know, who is it that said absolute power corrupts, corrupts absolutely? Well, in the situation you have right now. Mr. Tembekian has absolute power. He can do anything he wants. And, I mean, he's investigated me. He, he has come before you saying that he only investigates matters that are serious. There has got to be something more serious in the state of New York than me going through a, poli uh, a court scanner with my 81-year-old mother to take care of my dying father's business. I was actually investigated for that. He got the rule wrong. I produced Jewel Williams to say they got the rule wrong. They still argued the wrong rule. They have no control. They argue whatever they want, when they want to argue it. There is absolutely no control over this man. Again, you don't have to take my word for it. This is all documented. So, so defense just has a question. Uh, I, I you, how many complaints were made against, or investigated against you? I, I'll give you, I, I think, well, there are two that they don't know that I know about. They investigated me. How many? I think five or six. Okay, and can you give me the, uh, just a general flavor of what these investigations okay. were about? Okay, going through a court scanner with my mother, showing my judge's ID with a blue strip. The judges, there were three IDs in the court system. Red, yellow, and blue. A judge has a blue ID. The lieutenant, the newly minted lieutenant, didn't know my ID. He said that I could pass uh, without being stopped, and anybody could pass with me. I was there with my 80-plus-year-old mother. She's going to be 85 in about three weeks. What is that? Going through a security area? Yeah, going through a security area. Okay, that's one. That's what one. Um, keeping a child in her home. The child reported to me that. She had the flu. Actually, it was a 12-year-old child who evidently was going through a first period and didn't want to tell. Uh, when the, the uh, sheriff came to throw her out of the house, I stopped it. Chase complained. I stopped it. The rule is that people give basically six months to be evicted from a home. I gave two months. They got me on that. They, they, they censured me on... Um, when I was accosted in the parking lot, in the gated, secured parking lot of the court in Jamaica, somebody came up to me. He didn't like the fact that I was going to go visit my sick father. My father eventually died of, of Alzheimer's and cancer. I told the jury, not the jury, I told the attorneys that I'm going to get a tire fixed. But actually, my father had the flu when I was going to go. Wait, wait, this is... Bizarre. This is bizarre. That's no, no, wait a minute. Point. But your explanation is bizarre. We, we, you, you were stopped in a parking lot and accosted. Yes. For what, what were you asked to do? I was, uh, he wanted to, me to. Who's to, he? The, the person who accosted me. So somebody, general, accosted general me. public accosted you. Mm -hmm. so, no, so no, what, excuse me. The litigant accosted me. The next to, day. And what was the, he accosting you for? Was he, he was wanted, he, he, he wanted a longer adjournment. Okay. The next day, I said, forget about it. His attorney, Max Goldweber, said, no, 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 I don't want to forget about it. In the record that Mr. Tembekian didn't know was a brief that uh, was filed with the second department that talked about the, the meeting that we had. It said, I didn't want to, I didn't want to hold the guy in contempt. I, I, all you have to do is apologize. Mr. Tembekian said that meeting never took place, even though the complaining lawyer said it took place. But what proce court proceeding was there that you were, there was being complained It was contempt proceeding. I was doing a trial so, and I held so him in contempt for accosting me. So you held somebody in contempt? For accosting oh. me. For accosting you yeah, coming outside, up to of me. The, outside of the court? That's right. Uh, I, didn't, I wasn't familiar with that rule. I thought you had a contempt proceedings dealt with what happens in the courtroom. No, no. That, well, they changed the law for me. Thank you. Oh, okay. Uh, he came no. up to me. So that's three. What are the other ones? Uh, let me see. Uh, going with my mom to the scanner, well, that, we already making that. somebody try a case after two and a half years. Uh, um, they also investigated me. I, an attorney named Darren Kearns 
was found to have been um, 